Dude, so you accidentally sent a, a text message five times to 4,000 clients? Yes, absolutely. So and you pissed people off? The title or? of this video should be a great way to scare your customers away. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I did that one time. I had a lady that it just it went south. Like it was not, we were not a good fit. Long time ago, and I kept emailing her. She's like, you know, like basically threatened me. And I'm yeah. like, this was years ago. But so, yeah. and sometimes you have these customers on your do not call list. But you sent. Just tell the story, dude. So I exported all of my customers out, uh, basically anyone that wasn't. So we got about 6,000 people in the database. About 4,000 of them were still like on our contact list. And I uploaded into our custom software. I had built a text message, everybody. And I clicked the button, and it was spinning. And I'm like, stupid thing. Click the button again, and it shows an error message. So I clicked it like three more times, and finally it goes through. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then I like go to work out. And while I'm working out, my phone's like going ding. It's a text message saying, your credits have auto-renewed. I'm like, all right, whatever, that normally happens. Ding, and happen again, and ding, and happen again. And it should have cost us about 36 bucks to send all those text messages out. And I wind up having charges for $140. And I was like, uh-oh, something's not right. And so then we started having people like respond in the system. But then also I was getting text messages. I got some Snapchats from people like, hey, whatever your text messaging system is, please take me off that list. Um, and so, yeah, it was bad. And so like now I learned like we need to send like 500 and then let them respond because it's been a week and my sales guy is but still – Trying to catch up with them. So did you panic at all when you realized yeah, you I mean, sent your freaked, customers five I, text messages I, each? Like, yeah. it's obviously automated. Right, right. I freaked out for a second, but then I got to think, and I'm like, wait a minute. You're supposed to eliminate the bottom 20% of your customer base every single year. And so I'm like, <laughs> hey, you know, this one. so it was about a 347 house wash special. It's like, hey, you know, we're running a 347 house wash special. You know, this is Jacob. Give me a call if, you know, if we can do that for you or do anything else. And one guy messaged back and he was like, you can go F yourself for 347. And so uh, it was a way for us to, I'm looking at it like as a positive. I learned my lesson. I'll never send that many text messages at once again, but uh, also a way to kind of scrub the bottom list. Cause you know, if somebody's going to be I mean, sassy like that to you, I don't want to do business with them anyway. So we got booked out for nine weeks and I do, um, text messaging, email marketing, and voicemail message broadcasting. And I know you do that too. Yep, yep, yep. And I, I made the mistake. We had so much work coming and we were booked out for nine weeks and our capacity, we couldn't handle it. And I literally haven't had to do this in probably in like two years, actually apologize to a customer and mm -hmm. say, I'm sorry, I know we said that we're going to get there and we <laughs> rescheduled and rescheduled again, but we literally just can't make it there. I can't, I can't serve you. Yeah. And the customer was pissed off saying, hey, you were the one who contacted me. Yeah, asking me to clean my effing windows. And yeah. I was like, I oh, know, I'm sorry, I use this. I didn't tell them I use this broadcast <laughs> software, and it, it, it yeah, works. because for them, it works like, too good, man. They're like, you called me and left me a voicemail. What the hell you mean you're booked up, right? Yeah. Like, but yeah, sometimes once you know, we're just getting into this era now of like where you can use technology in your marketing and in your sales, and like my sales guys use the text messaging software as well. So like we'll take each week, any open quotes that we have, we'll pull that list and we'll send them a text message instead of my sales guy having to go through each individual person. Like, Hey, Mrs. Johnson, do you have any more questions or are you ready to move forward with the quote we sent you? Like he types that one time and just, just <laughs> and you know, and most people would be like, well, then what's your sales guy? Like then he can go cold prospect. So now it, by making my sales guy more efficient, with the stuff I need him to do, which is follow up, because that's where you make the money. Um, by making that more efficient, it gives him more time to go prospect to sell the big clients. So, um, dude, I just had another aha. Okay. So you have a multiple six figure business yep. and pressure washing, window yep. cleaning. You guys are multi state. You, yep. He's got employees, uh, subcontractors, all that. One of the hangups I still have in my service business is I raise my prices every single year to the point where I'm like, can I really raise them much higher? But if you have that many leads and that much follow-up going on that opens up the it raises the ceiling even higher for you to be able to raise your prices even higher for sure and cherry pick and even be that more picky can you talk about that yeah for sure you, do that. you either you but i mean there's like there's a point of diminishing return as they call it statistics so where like you hit the peak and it comes down there's only it's, so much the market can bear yeah, yeah like i mean you're only going to pay so much for a car like if you went into ford and ford's like man we're selling ford focuses like crazy they're a hundred thousand dollars now like they're <laughs> 
they're not going to say, okay, we're going to sell less. Like they're not going to sell anybody because nobody in their right mind would pay a hundred thousand dollars for a Ford Focus. And so you can use that in the business. You know, you can increase those. So and, where and do it's you find the demand. data that sh- I know your closing ratio goes down, right. but where do you find the sweet spot in the data? Because there's a lot of different factors. Knowing like when to charge. Like, so like customer avatar, zip code, certain neighborhoods, the way you communicate, the way you position your business, yeah. the amount of business you've done. The, for sure. Like for how sure. do you? We I just talked to Jacob, my account executive today about it, is that we our minimums are going to 497 for roofs because like, yeah, can we get in and out on a roof for 300 bucks? But it's like I just don't want to deal with them anymore. And so like you can kind of pick and choose those services. And I would much rather us go after commercial. Like we're trying to scale a lot more towards commercial than we are residential um, because it's just a lot of work, man. It's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of variables. Plus residential customers are way picky because they're spending their money on their property. I'd much rather work with someone that's spending other people's money on other people's property, right? Because they're just not, it's not, they're not as picky um, and it's more money. So but I don't know if that answers your question or not. <laughs> so have you been through all these processes and all this stuff and you had the data, but you also know it? Yeah, it's like a gut feeling, right? Like yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, like when, when Van Halen's playing his guitar, like he doesn't think <laughs> nice guitar here. I didn't know you played the guitar. So it's like, you know, he's not thinking my what? arm's tired from home. Oh, yeah, switch sides. Uh he's not thinking like all right, six string, seven string, six string, seven string. Like he's just playing with rhythm and feel. And so, um, you know, it's like for me, it's just a gut feeling of looking at numbers and saying, what can we make on a commercial job? How long does that take me to do in residential? We don't want to get rid of residential because it's great cash flow. I mean, we today we had a crew go out, do 1200 1300 bucks, and they got paid for all the jobs today. So it's like, boom, that can help make payroll and keep us floating, cover debt service. Um, but the bigger jobs – they basically go straight to the bottom line. So um, that's why we do it. But I don't know. It's just when you when you do it enough, uh, you do enough repetitions, you figure out what works and what doesn't work. And I think that's – a lot of guys don't want to hear that. A lot of people, gals, there's girls out there run businesses too. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that they've got to go through those painstaking mistakes to figure it out. Like there's, there's certain things you can learn from books and mentors and coaches, but there's certain things like you don't – if you're a boxer – people can't tell you like, Hey, this is how a right hook is going to feel. Like you've got to get punched in the face with the right hook to go, shit. I don't want to take very many of those. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, so, I don't know if that's hopefully that answers their question. Your question. Nice. <laughs> this is DJ. Check him out. Hashtag coach Carol anywhere on social media. Just type it in. Hashtag yep. coach Carol. Yeah. I'll put links in the description below to an awesome three part interview series. We did. It's dope, dude. Killer. And the podcast too. If you like to just listen, the podcast Untrap Podcast, the Untrap Podcast. You also have the Sales Factory. Yep, you can be fine on any major podcast platform. Yeah, man. Peace.